Let's say you're building a project using Arduino and you have an event that you want to have happen every so often. Maybe every three minutes you want a servo motor to move. Or maybe every 20 seconds you want to update a web server with the most current sensor reading. How do you create these timed events in Arduino? That's the objective of this series of lessons, that by the end you'll be able to program repetitive timed events using your Arduino. Now, if you've watched the previous lessons, we've talked about the Millis function kind of in general, we've talked about tight loops and blocking code, and some issues that arise when using the delay function. Now, I want to talk about how we can use the Millis function to create simple timed events. Specifically, we'll cover a quick review of the Millis function, we'll think about the Millis timeline, we'll use Millis to create once-off timed events, we'll use Millis to create repetitive timed events, and finally, we'll talk about how black holes can alter space-time. Let's start with a quick review of the Millis function. I think the easiest way to review this function is just to take a look at it in a simple sketch. So what I'm going to do is write a sketch that prints the value of Millis to the serial monitor window. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and I'm going to begin in the setup and use the serial begin function to enable serial communication. Then in the loop, I'm going to use the serial print line function and I want to print the value of Millis. So every time through the loop, this program will print the current value of the Millis function. So if we load this sketch onto our Arduino and open up the serial monitor window, you'll see the value of Millis is increasing rapidly. So what is this value that the Millis function returns? Well, the Millis function returns the number of milliseconds that your Arduino board has been powered up. So as soon as your Arduino board is powered up, the millis function begins tracking the number of milliseconds that have passed. It starts at zero and it counts up and up until it gets to four billion and some change. And then it overflows, which is just a fancy way of saying that it starts counting back at zero. And it would take 49 days for the millis function to overflow. So the number of millis gets real big and it gets big pretty quickly. Now the way Millis is able to track the number of milliseconds that have passed is by using the timer counter module built into the integrated circuit that the Arduino uses. In our Arduino code, we don't have to start the clock or start Millis. It starts all by itself in the background. Now if you want to learn more about how the Millis function works, definitely check out the first lesson in the series. So how can we conceptualize Millis so that we can use it to create timed repetitive events? Well, let's start by thinking of Millis as moving along a timeline. So the timeline starts at zero and it goes all the way up to four billion and some change. And again, these numbers represent milliseconds. So at any point during our program, we can call the Millis function and find out exactly where we are on the timeline. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the first five seconds of a program. So this little dot represents where Millis is on the timeline. And for the sake of explanation, let's slow down that dot because I really can't talk that fast. So as soon as we power up Arduino, the Millis function starts counting. So you can see the value is increasing, moving to the right along the time axis. Now, if we want to create timed repetitive events, how could we use this timeline to our advantage? What if I reached out ahead in time and I made a little hatch line and I said, when the value of millis gets here, do this thing. In code, it might look something like this. So let's talk through this sketch from the point when power is first applied. So power is applied, we get into the loop, and the first thing we do is check millis. Since we just began, the value of millis is low. It's less than the value of event one, which was a thousand. So this if statement condition is false and the code in the curly brackets doesn't run. So this loop continues to execute over and over and the if statement keeps getting passed over because the condition is false. But that really doesn't last long because before we know it, the value of millis has exceeded the value of the event one variable. So now the if statement condition is true and the code within the if statement begins to execute. So now we've created a timed event using millis. But this really isn't exactly what we're after. It might work for some applications, like let's say you're building a radiation warning exposure timer. 
and say you when you flip on a switch it turns on the Arduino and when so much time has passed an indicator light is turned on. So after a defined interval an LED turns on and then it just stays on. Now we could have used the delay function to achieve the same thing. But what's nice with using Millis is that since we didn't use the delay function, we can do other stuff in the loop. Maybe we can read a sensor or update a display or whatever. The millis function won't block other code from running like the delay function would. Furthermore, if we wanted to, we could add more events that trigger at later times. So this is one way to use millis, but it's really not what we're after. We want to create repetitive timed events. For example, every 30 seconds, maybe we want to read the water temperature or every minute we want a servo motor to move left and then right again. For these types of programs, this simple use of Millis won't do it. So let's go back to our timeline. So here we are at the timeline again. And I'm thinking, what if we do this? What if we still have our hash mark, right? We say, when Millis gets to this value, then we want to execute our event. But now what we'll do is when the Millis value gets to this point, and our event code runs, what we'll do in part of our code is update the event time. And so essentially what we're gonna do is move that hash mark down the timeline to the next point. So every time we get to that hash mark, we also update the hash mark for the next time around. It's kind of like we're holding this caret in front of the millis function, like here, come get it. And then when the millis function finally gets there, we move it further down. That's just kind of mean. So let's try some code and see what this might look like. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and the first thing I'm gonna do is set the interval of the event. So I've created a constant, and I've named it event interval. And the reason I have it as a constant is because the interval isn't going to change. I want my event to happen every thousand milliseconds. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable that I'm gonna to use to update the time. I'm gonna call it previous time, so let's do that. So I've created previous time and it is an unsigned long. And the reason these are unsigned longs is because the value of millis gets extremely large and we wanna be able to hold that value in our variable. I talk about this in one of the previous lessons, so make sure to check out one of the earlier videos in this series to learn more about that. Now in the setup, I'm gonna go ahead and start serial communication using the serial begin function, because in the loop, I'll be sending some stuff to the serial monitor. So I'll do that now. Now down in the loop, what I'm gonna do is create a variable, and it's going to get updated every time through the loop with the current time. And how do I get the current time? Well, I just call the millis function. Remember, the millis function is gonna report back to me where we are on that millis timeline. So I'll do that now. So I've created a variable called current time and I set it equal to the output of the millis function. So every time through the loop, current time is going to be holding the current value of the millis function. So now comes the key step. I wanna create some type of function that is only going to happen when I'm at my event interval. So every 1000 seconds, I want something to happen. So the code I'm gonna use is gonna be an if statement. And the condition here is what is key. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and write this if statement and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so this kind of looks like a doozy, but let's just talk through this. So what does this if statement do? Well, it takes the current time, and remember, the current time is constantly being updated through the loop with the millis function. So it takes the current time, it subtracts it from the previous time, and then it checks to see if the value here is greater than or equal to the event interval. Okay, so let's just, let's just really nail down these events right down. Let's put some numbers to them. So we know event interval is never gonna change, right? It's a constant and we set it to 1000. So you can just think of this as 1000. And now we've got two other numbers here. We've got current time 
and we know this value is always going up, right? Because this is the value that we're getting from millis. So think of current time as just, it's almost like a big arrow up. It's always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we've got something that's getting really big. And now we've got to ask, what is previous time? Well, previous time starts at zero. So we've got a number that's zero here. And then we've got a value here that's current time. So the first time through the loop, the difference between current time and previous time is going to be small. And that's because we just started the program, right? So millis, you know, it starts at zero. Maybe millis is at like 100. So we'd say, well, 100 minus zero, that's 100. And we'd ask, is 100 greater than or equal to 1,000? No, it's not. So this if statement, all the code inside here wouldn't run. And so we'd get to the end of the loop and we'd start right back at the top. We'd assign millis, the value of millis, to the current time. So let's say now it's uh, 200 milliseconds. All right, so now current time is 200. We get back to this if statement. And now we ask, all right, is 200 minus zero, is that greater than or equal to 1,000? It still isn't. So we skip this if statement. We would keep doing that over and over until a second has passed. When a second has passed, then the millis function is going to return 1,000. So now we'd say, is 1,000 minus zero, is that greater than or equal to 1,000? We'd say, hey, yes, it is. Sweet. So we can jump into our code. So the event code that I've got here is just printing something to the serial monitor. And then what we do, and this is kind of the, the trick, this is how we scooch down that hash mark so that the next time around, we can have this event happen again in another thousand seconds. So what we do is we take the previous time, which was zero, and we update it with the current time. And we had said that the current time was a thousand. So now previous time is now equal to a thousand. Okay, so we've updated that time we exit the if statement, and then we come right back into the loop. Now current time is going to get updated again, right? So maybe it's like, I don't know, a thousand, let's just say a thousand and ten milliseconds. So now we've got a thousand and ten here, and we've got to subtract a thousand and ten from previous time. Well, what was previous time? Well, we had just updated it to a thousand. So what's a thousand and ten minus one thousand? Well, that's ten. Is ten greater than or equal to a thousand? Nope, it's not. So we skip over this code. And you can kind of see what's going on here. We're going to keep skipping over this code until another second has passed. Because when another second has passed, then millis is going to be 2,000. And we'll ask ourselves in this if statement, is 2,000 minus 1,000, is that greater than or equal to 1,000? We say, yeah, it's equal to that. So then we can run this code again. And you can see, we'll print out to the serial monitor, our event code, or whatever code it is that you want to have happen at that specified time. And then we update the previous time again. And this right here is the coding paradigm that is going to allow you to create repetitive timed events using your Arduino. So I know it can look a little tricky. Seems like there's a lot of variables. The best way to really get a handle on this is just to write the program yourself and mess around with it. All right, well, let's just do a quick review of what we talked about. First, we did a quick review of the millis function. We said, hey, you don't have to like start the millis function, it's just always counting. It starts at zero from when the time the Arduino is powered up and it counts up to four billion and some change, and then it starts over again once it gets to the top. Then we talked about kind of thinking about millis moving down a timeline in our program. This is kind of a way to help us conceptualize how we can use millis to create timed events. Then we talked about creating once-off timed events using the millis function. And finally, we talked about creating repetitive timed events using the millis function. Well, hey, I hope you found this lesson helpful. We're going to have a couple more lessons about the millis function and using it, some different uh, cases. So stick around, stay tuned for the next lesson. Have a great day. Take it easy. Bye.